This week's video focuses on a framework for building out Numenera characters in the Cypher system. This video will help you understand one method for building a Numenera character with these rules. If you have any questions pertaining to character creation in the Cypher system, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll address it either in the comments or may include it in an upcoming community Q&A video. In the Cypher system, characters are made up of three distinct components. These components are descriptor, type, and focus. They combine to form a sentence such as, a vicious glaive who never says die, a charming right who sees beyond, a doomed jack who controls beasts, or a mercurial nano who makes something out of nothing. Character creation in the Cypher system is therefore as simple as just constructing a sentence. You are a descriptor type who focuses. While the book advises starting with your character type, stating that it's the core of your character, I'm actually going to suggest using the game's character construction sentence as the order of operations for character construction in Numenera. Starting with the descriptor, this gives us a sense of the personality of the character. Are they heroic, graceful, imaginative, mystical, or any of the more than 45 options from just Discovery and Destiny? This helps us think about the personality of this character first and how they weigh on the narrative in terms of how we might describe their presence. It gives us a sense of how they might speak, move, and go about the world. And it also prompts us to think about who they are in the setting of the Ninth World. What does a swift character look like in Numenera? What does a loyal character pledge their adherence toward? The descriptor does come with some stats, and each one is unique, but most typically give anywhere from a plus two to a plus four in certain stat pools, plus at least a skill or two. Character descriptors also frequently come with an inability that adds a bit of dimensionality to a character, followed up by often some handy equipment, an esoteric, or other unique ability. Each character descriptor has an initial link to the starting adventure. Depending on the nature of the game you're to be playing, this may or may not be something you wish to consider using. Since some of these code in backstory elements, such as contacts elsewhere in the world, unique situations in their history or otherwise, this may be something you consider skipping to add more of your own ideas. But since there are also four options, you could also just roll a d4 for a random result. I like doing that for pregens. Moving on to your character's type, it's really important to read through the opening parts of the section of your character's type, as this will help you understand their likely place in the world. And since we've started with the descriptor, we already have a sense of your character's personality, as well as some things they're probably good at. This to me is essential in fleshing out your character as a character and not just a unit in a game with a specific move set. They're going to be their own Glaive, Nano, Jack, Arcus, Wright, or Delve, and in this section we're coming to understand their most direct and practical talents and abilities, where they end up in the greater context of the Ninth World. It will likely influence their experience, what they've done with their life, and what they're going to do in the games to come. Consider your character's type background. You'll be given three choices, and these are largely flavor as they have no direct mechanical influence, but in their inclusion, they do actively tell the story of how your character became your type. This background information is also important for considering how you may advance your character as you progress through the 24 levels of advancement and six tiers. Because of how this may work, let me use an example. One of the Nano's background options, Ports and Plugs on page 38 of Numenera Discovery, describes a character whose body is thoroughly modified with a variety of circuitry, implanted jacks and ports where modules and other technologies explain not merely the origin of this character's power and abilities, their deep physical relationship to the Numenera, but it also likely points to their appearance and may play a role in their personality, sense of self, and who they are as they move through the Ninth World. This section suggests that such a character advances through means of finding new hardware and implants or unplugging one module and jacking in a replacement. These parts, the hardware, implants, ports, and modules, this is what the XP used for advancement should represent. Your GM may choose to solidify this by requiring the player to find new parts in order to advance the character, similar to how crafting classes and other games use money to represent what it means to acquire specific ingredients and plans. 
Since background is presented in this book as a flavor, it is entirely up to you when it comes to how your character advances. The question really is about what kind of game you want to play. Do you want to play a nano who regularly seeks out ancient texts on the mysteries of the Numenera? Well, then choosing forbidden knowledge might be the right background for this concept. If you want to play a glaive who seeks out training from great masters of physical prowess, you may wish to choose intensive training. This can provide material for a great backstory or can be incorporated actively into the game by providing you with a narrative compass to follow as your character grows in power and versatility. Each character type also has a connection, presented in the form of a rollable table with 20 options. This, much like the initial link to the starting adventure in your descriptor, is something you may wish to discuss with your GM. Rolling randomly and going with the result is always a great option, but you may wish to make a more intentional selection and perhaps expand on what's indicated here. These are all great writing prompts for a backstory. You should also take note of your suggested player intrusions. These are unique, special meta abilities that cost 1 XP each and, as the book suggests, should have very limited use given their potential. You are free to come up with your own player intrusions pending GM approval, but the given ones are a great way to start thinking of unique solutions to difficult problems. Finally, we get to our mechanics and stats. Each character type has a pre-selected set of starting pool points, as well as six additional points for you to distribute as you wish. Given that we've started with our descriptor, we also have more freedom to decide what to do with these extra points. Add in your starting stat pools to what was given from your descriptor and either save the extra six points for later, or you can make those choices now. Go through what's given to you from your tier, this being your initial effort value, your stat edges, maximum cipher carrying capacity, as well as a number of other things such as training and unique skills. It is important at this stage to remember that unless your type says you are trained in either understanding, crafting, or salvaging Numenera, you are assumed to have an inability in these areas. These are the only skills in the game that work this way, according to the book. They can be used as templates for some house rules that add in a more nuanced and dynamic skill system, should you choose to build that, and if that seems appropriate for the kind of game you want to play. Go through all of your equipment as well, as you may gain some very useful items that are worth keeping in mind given some of the challenges you may run into out there in the ninth world. I personally use the equipment section of the character sheet as the space where I'll indicate attack options, always with the weapons as equipment. I do this as I prefer to de-center attack abilities from their usual assumption as the default way to interact with the world. As a result, I almost always leave attack areas of character sheets blank. If I have to use a weapon, the information for its lethality is indicated in the equipment section. TTRPGs aren't video games, nor should they be combat simulations by default particularly in a game like Numenera that prioritizes discovery. From here, you can select your type abilities, leading up to the final step, adding what your focus gives you. Your focus is going to further detail and differentiate your character, and Numenera, Discovery, and Destiny have more than 50 options to choose from. These could add a distinct narrative flair, such as emerged from the obelisk, or it may further describe what your character does in this world, such as works miracles. Your focus typically gives you at least one unique ability, but some may grant you an additional piece of equipment, extra pool points, or new skills. Your focus in Numenera also provides you with a minor and major effect suggestion. Mark these down where appropriate so you have something to go by when you inevitably roll a 19 or a 20 on a die. Your focus also gives you a connection to another PC. Much like many of the other backstory and flavor elements, you may rely on this to spark an interesting idea, roll randomly to choose among them, or come up with something entirely original. Sometimes I like to reserve the connections as well as initial links to the starting adventure as something decided at the very end of character creation, once everyone in the party has a character built and ready to go. Then we can start having a discussion about what kind of stories these characters tell together. Add in your six stat pools if you haven't already and your character is essentially ready to go. There are a variety of ways to consider building a character in Numenera, particularly when it comes to the cipher system. You may always go by the section in the book and start with your character type, as it's very similar to picking a class in different games, but I hope this video demonstrates how following the character sentence structure as the guide for construction 
gets us thinking in a more narrative context and less of an abstraction of a selection of abilities to throw at difficulty tasks. Mechanical concerns have clear and concrete answers. Our stat pools require specific numbers. Our abilities cost specific pool points and often have clear outlined functions. But by embracing the narrative and linguistic spirit of the cipher system, we can use what's provided by these books as prompts to get us into the headspace necessary to write up a great character and role play them with a sense of their personality, who they are, and what makes them unique. And with those three distinct modular sections, your descriptor, type, and focus, there's a lot of freedom to build and design interesting characters to play in an endlessly fascinating universe. In future videos, I'll do a few walkthroughs of select character builds, as well as some other considerations for how one may decide to build a character in this system. Until then, be sure to subscribe to The Infinite Construct for more Numenera, Cypher System, and Science Fantasy gaming videos.